What's up guys? All right, I'm gonna make this video as short as possible. Now this is a response video to um, a Facebook ad that I saw that says, you know, play like Steve Ray Vaughan. All right, and it's a kind of a guitar course. But the problem with this is it draws you in and tries to get you to, to buy a PDF or you get a PDF file for free. So basically just tablature and kind of laying out licks. So this is important. That's really, really good stuff but that is not going to show you how to play in Steve Ray Vaughan style or Jimi Hendrix or Eric Clapton or Jimmy Page. And, and the reason is on, on my channel, I try to focus a little bit more on musculature and, um, and training small muscles and, and dynamics. That, um, that is going to be a little bit more important to learn to then take into a tablature, like if you wanna go out and buy like a Steve Ray Vaughan guitar book, is having this, this basis of style, being able to hear what it is that he's doing and then take it into a tablature because the tablature isn't going to have those styles written. If you, if you take a guitar lick and you have Jimmy Page and Eric Clapton and Steve Ray Vaughan and Jimi Hendrix all play the same lick with um, with the same guitar setup, you're going to be able to tell the difference. And the difference is in the inflection, in the style, and in the musculature. And that's what I wanna go over. Let's just specifically stay with Steve Ray Vaughan. I'm gonna make this short um, because I'm not, I'm not always super into doing tutorials um, in the style of somebody else, but I do find it very beneficial, uh, both for musculature training and also, you know, we're always taking you know, a little bit from that guitar player and a little bit from that guitar player and kind of putting it together. So it's nice to be able to hear what the differences are. So I want to take a plain lick. Now, you guys are going to have to excuse me. I'm using this 1952K. It has a, a grounding issue. So this is going to be a little bit noisy. Right, this is the only guitar I have. I'm kind of home for the holiday. So we're just going to take a simple lick. We'll do it in G. have a student that will come to me and say, you know, if whatever song that would be, why doesn't it sound like this person? Why doesn't it sound like this person? And, and, and believe it or not, in this kind of guitar teacher game, Steve Ray Vaughan is the one that comes out so often, which is why I don't mind touching on it, because there's a lot of very explosive muscle movement that I love to get into, all right? So let's just do a really, really quick lesson um, that I want you guys to be able to take with you, but also so you guys can kind of uh, understand where it is that I'm coming from and why I think maybe some of those ads, you know, play like Steve Ray Vaughan are a little deceptive and I don't want you guys to get discouraged if you do decide to move forward with those ads. So let's just get into this real quick. It's kind of like a... Not that complicated, but what's happening in there is we're doubling up on our velocity with our right hand, okay? So not just, all right, we're adding a little bit more movement, all right? So once, I know I talk a lot about cutting the movement down to get um, the most precise and efficient way of picking, we're going to add more movement to add velocity. So it's gonna add velocity this way, but then we're also gonna add velocity that way. So it's doubling up. So we're not just doing what I call like the doorknob turn, which would be like if I were to just do, Nice and light, we're taking that and adding like a full strum, basically, like a, all right? And you're kind of digging in that way. When you're doing that, what adds a really cool feel, and Steve Ray Vaughan loves this trick, and I love how often he uses it, because it's kind of a signature for him, but also he doesn't overuse it. So we're gonna add a little bit of a rake. So you're gonna take your palm and just move it right up here, all right? And then what's gonna happen, so we're, um, we're down here on the, uh, on the eighth fret of the bottom string, and you're gonna kind of pick through, maybe start on the fourth string. Those are gonna be blocked by your palm, and then actually the second string is going to be blocked by your third finger. So you get this. That's gonna be that first note. You're gonna bend it up, try to get it a whole step up. He doesn't always reach those notes, unless it's a sustained bend that he wants to go for. So that's another really cool Stevie thing. He says, it kind of makes you want like that note to be reached, but it's not gonna be a clean, right? It gives it a little bit like of, of, of oomph to it. Um, and then our first finger, this is another awesome trick that Stevie uses a lot, and I love this, is you really quickly will get, 
especially on, let me just jump to the second leg. Or, I'm sorry, the last third of that first leg. That bend is, we're actually hitting that tension note, and we're kind of like, if I could do it on a pitch graph, hitting the note and bending it up real quick, violently just at the end, but we're almost not letting the pitch get any higher. It just gives it like this little bit of boost just at the end. So listen to that last note. Right? And same thing, watch my hand. So I'm not just doing, you can hear the difference right there. It just has so much more spark because I'm adding down picking, down wrist picking, and turning my wrist. That. That motion just aimed at those bottom strings. All right, and then um, his vibrato in the middle. So just when I do these, the resolving notes here, that vibrato is so intense and it kicks off right away. Um, a, a, another style that I love that he, he shies away from is when you hit the note and then add a little vibrato at the end, he kicks right in with that vibrato. Alright, so that lick, that first lick, we have our rake into the uh, uh, into the 8th fret of the bottom string, rake into it and punch down in on it, and bend it up but not all the way up uh, a whole step. And you're going to come right in on the vibrato on that 8th fret of the 2nd string, and then you're going to end it with that tension bend. And you can get a little bit of a rake, a little bit of a punch in there, even if you get, if you listen, sometimes Stevie will hit. Right, a little bit of an open string, it just adds like, um, kind of the sense of adventurous uh, playing, you know, and kind of like not afraid to just put all of that musculature out there. When, when you're doing that, um, you can tend to burn out a little bit and you will get a little less accurate. Um, he didn't because he was so, I don't want to say well trained because he wasn't really well trained, he just was always playing. Um, so within that one lick, there are so many stylistic things that Stevie Ray Vaughan does that that is what I want you guys to focus on so then you can then take that and move that into learning some of his tabs and that's going to open up your ear. Um, to be able to, to, to hear what he's doing and when he's pulling these tricks. So really it's the same thing over and over, or the first lick is a tension lick. You know, or however it is that you want to land, but I'm using, I'm only using those three notes with, with bends, all right? So I want you guys to try that. The one last thing, and you'll have to excuse me on this guitar because this thing is like, bitch to play, uh, but one trick that he does that I absolutely love is a whole step bend uh, with a vibrato on it and a very, very interesting style of picking. I just want to touch on this, okay? So if I were to go, I'm going to switch keys and I'm just going to go to A because that's going to be a little easier for me to do. So I'm going to go to the eighth fret of the second string and I'm going to bend it up to the 10th fret. Again, guys, I'm sorry about that buzz. So we're just going to go. All right, but instead of just leaving it there, just as a bend, he strikes it hard like he always does and gives it a hell of a bend. So it sounds like this. does it brings out so much harmonic in there um, and it's just one trick that's really cool because it is difficult if you get that bend and then to be able to hold that bend and give a vibrato oh my god this thing has 13s on it's super high action it's like tearing my fingers up and you get a little bit of a rake into it it's gonna like it's gonna give you so much explosion one last trick I know I just said that about this last one too is um, he loves switching up between his up picking and his down picking. If you guys listen, if I do this, that sounds different than if I do down picking. Alright. It gives two things. It adds, um, our up picks are always a little bit more stiff. So we are going to get a little bit more of a higher end harmonic in there. 
Also, he digs in a little bit more, so he's not just using the, the tip of the pick. I mean, he's really drilling in. And when you do that, you can hear as the, the bend is happening, we're we end up blocking, because I'm on the first string, we end up blocking the second and the third string. So those are X'd out a little bit, right? So we get that sound over the velocity of an up pick on the bottom string. So I'm just playing right here on the eighth fret and I'm just gradually bending up while drilling in on an up pick. <laughs> Try that guys. When I was learning these styles, that was so much more effective for me than just reading a tab. Um, and then once uh, my teacher started teaching me these concepts, I would watch like videos of these guys and see what it was that they were doing and try to adapt to it. And that is way more effective than just trying to learn tab. Cause if you're not also tuning your ear to be able to hear these styles, you're not gonna be able to figure out why it is you don't sound that way. Um, and the very last thing is, this stuff cannot really be taught on a PDF file. Um, it also, it can be taught on a video, but it's way more effective to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Like I would love to see what it is that you guys are doing um, to change where your musculature arrives or what it is that you need to train on. Some people are not able to do some of these bigger muscle movements because their smaller muscle groups are not trained well enough. That is also a problem because if you guys, um, you know, it's even just like, I don't know, like weight training or running or something like that. Like you guys aren't going to be able to bend down and pick up 200 pounds if you haven't trained your way up there. So those like... <laughs> So I hope this video was effective. I hope you guys are a little bit careful with who, who it is that you uh, are either paying or subscribing to or taking lessons from at least um, and trying to get a little bit more detailed. If you guys need to send me a video of you playing some Steve Ray Vaughn stuff or some Jimi Hendrix stuff um, and I can try to help figure out what it is that uh, that'll help you get to, the, to, that, uh, to that tone that you're looking for. So awesome guys. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon.